The fly I'm going to tie today is the zebra midge. Uh, the zebra midge is a really simple fly to tie. It doesn't require a lot of materials, and it's actually the first fly that I ever learned to tie uh, back when I first started out. And it's one of those flies that's not just easy to tie, but I use it all of the time. Um, my home water that I fish all the time is the tailwaters of the South Holston River in Tennessee. And this particular fly down there is just a go-to. I never go down there without several versions of this in my fly box ready to go because it almost always produces fish. So the way that I start this fly is I've got a um, size 18 and I usually fish this in an 18, a 20, or a 22. Um, down in the South Holston, those fish are pretty heavily pressured. So smaller is always better but 18 is my normal size so i've got a size 18 scud hook with a two millimeter bead and i'm using 70 utc thread in black so let me start the fly i come in right behind the bead with my thread and begin to tie my thread base and we just go back towards the bend of the hook get back just so far we'll go ahead and cut this tag end off Then I'll continue to wrap with touching wraps all the way into the bend. I like to get pretty deep into the bend of the hook. And then what I'll do is I'll wrap my thread, touching wraps all the way back to the bead again. Just like that. Now, for the segmentation on this fly, I'm gonna use a small piece of silver wire. And I'm gonna take that silver wire and I'm gonna place it in and just tuck it in underneath the bead. And then I'm gonna capture it with a couple of loose wraps of my thread and then pull tight. And then I'm gonna keep it on the far side of the bead, or I'm rather the far side of the hook and I'm going to wrap this wire in and I'm going to use touching wraps and I'm going to wrap it all the way back deep into the bend just like this and then I'll wrap back up all the way to the bead Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna build out a tapered body on this fly. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna wrap back down the hook with touching wraps about halfway. So I'll just go down the hook, get to about half, and I'm gonna wrap back up. Touching wraps all the way. I want a nice smooth taper on this fly. And then when I get back to the bead, I'm gonna go half that distance again. So I'm gonna come down and not go all the way to half, but maybe do about a fourth of the way down the hook. And then I'm gonna stop, and I'm gonna wrap touching wraps all the way back up to the bead again. And then I'll do it one more time. About half that distance, then touching wraps, all the way back to the bead. Now, once I've got that, what I'm gonna do, and this is just my personal preference, I like to go in and put a single whip finish on my fly at this point. And what that does is it just locks the thread into place. So I don't have to worry about it coming unraveled. So I just take my whip finisher and put a single whip finish right there behind the bead. For this next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the rotary function on my vise. I'm gonna take a hold of this wire and I'm gonna rotate the fly. And as I rotate it, I'm gonna do some really evenly spaced segments using this wire, creating a nice little spiral 
almost like a barber pole, all the way up the fly. And then when I get to the bead, I'm just going to lock this wire off with my thread. So I'll just hold it steady, take my bobbin, and put a couple wraps in right behind it, and then a couple wraps in front of it. So wrap here, and then a couple of wraps right here. Maybe three just to make sure I have it good. And then I'm going to helicopter off the wire. So I'm just going to take the wire and turn it. You can use some old scissors for this. But you can just helicopter it off like that. Then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to put a few more wraps right in behind that bead. I want to make sure that bead is locked in there pretty good and tight. And it is. So now to finish this fly, I'm just going to put three whip finishes in it. So just one, two, three, pull my whip finisher out, and then take my scissors, cut the thread. And that is a finished zebra mitch. Rotate that around so you can see it. Probably trim off that little bit of thread tag that I have sitting right there. That's kind of aggravating. We'll clean that up a little bit more later. And then what I'll do to finish this fly is I'll actually come in with some Sally Hansen's um, Hard as Nails and coat this fly really good and let it soak into the threads. If you do that um, and then let it dry, you really get a durable fly that you can fish over and over again without having to worry about it coming unraveled. But that's all there is to tying a black zebra midge. You're, you can tie a hundred of these things um, and guaranteed you're going to use them.